Hey what's up guys, OSJ here with a video with a bit of a difference. It was suggested in the comments on another video, why didn't I do a video on Amiga games that span the most discs. I have never seen a video like this on YouTube, but it intrigued me, because I'm sure we can all remember swapping discs, sometimes at the most exciting moments of a game. Anyway, the way I went to research, and I called upon my good friend Sin Steve, who is the most knowledgeable person I know when it comes to real Amiga games. And with his input and help from the Hall of Light, I've put together this list of 20 games starting with a staggering 10 discs per game. So here we have the 20 Amiga games that span the most discs. First up we have Evil's Doom. This game spanned 10 discs, but was sadly never commercially released due to major bugs at the time. It has however now been revisited and somewhat sorted, and for me is the best dungeon crawler that was never released. Next up is Harold's Mission. This is a Polish point and click game that looks great, but sadly as I don't speak Polish I've never played it. Nevertheless it's a game that used 10 discs so it's in the list. Innocent Until Caught is next in with 10 discs. This again is a point and click, but comes in English so I have played it and it's a great game. It's appeared in a couple of my other lists, and it's a really good overlooked gem for point and click fans. Here we have Jonathan, the next art venture. This again is in another language and it's German. There are translation methods available though, but I have to say that although it's super looking and gets good reviews, it's never really dragged me in, as the genre isn't really my type. That said, it has so much content that it spans 10 discs. King's Quest 6 is up next and it's one that I played quite a lot on the emulator, but never on real hardware. It's a great point and click game, and because I played it I can see why it uses 10 discs, because it's one of the best point and click games on the system. Next up is Olo Fight, and it's the first bad game on the list. This scored only 34% in the Mega format, and after playing it, I realise why. What I can't realise is why such a terrible game merited spanning over 10 discs. Personally, if I had this back in the day, these 10 discs would have been put to better use.
Here we have Rise of a Dragon. This is an above par point and click game that uses 10 discs. Although it's not on my list of favourite point and click games, I think that the content it delivers forgives the 10 discs required for the full game. Next is Six Sense Investigations. This is another game that I could take or leave. While it's more cartoon than the previous point and clicks, it's still super slick looking, but the story never pulled me in, which for point and clicks is really important, and it's another 10 disc span game. Star Crusader is next up. This is a 3D shooter that the gameplay didn't live up to the stunning graphics. I can only assume that that's where the 10 disc space was used, because even though I love shooters, this one's not for me. Now we have the last of the 10 disc spanning games, and it's Waxworks. This is a super first person click through adventure game. It's one of the best horror games on the Amiga, with some nice graphics and super gory scenes. If you want a game to give a real horror feel, then this one is definitely worth checking out. Flight of the Amazon Queen is next, and this is another game that is usually overlooked in favour of other point and click adventures, but I tell you that this is one great adventure game, which is super polished from start to finish, and although it uses a total of 11 discs, it's one that I had in my collection and played a lot. Next up is Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. This is not only my favourite game on the list, but also in my eyes the best point and click game on any system. This game always gets overlooked for Monkey Island, but for me the fact that you were virtually playing as Indiana Jones in the movie was what made this game for me. It's 11 discs so, but I'd have put up with 20 disc swaps for this game. Here we have Monkey Island 2 which is probably the best known game on the list. It's a sequel to the great Monkey Island and was a true visual and adventure upgrade from the original. When it comes to games that everybody remembers for spanning multiple discs, this one is always gets mentioned and everyone knows it's had 11 discs.
Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo is next up, another fighting game and again another game that doesn't deliver on expectations. Screenshots wise this game is brilliant, but because of the large perfect sprites the frame rate has suffered drastically, making this game so jerky it's virtually unplayable for Street Fighter fans. But because of the great looking visuals this game spanned 11 discs. Next up is Adventures of Willy Beamish. This is a Sierra game, and Sierra were renowned for large disc spanning games, and this is the one that spans the most. It's a point and click adventure that is stunning to look at, but the game is too simple, and the 12 disc swapping is a proper fun killer. Bloodnet is next, and this is also a 12 disc game that was totally ruined by disc changes, as you found that the slightest thing involved a disc change. It's a real shame though, as this is one of the best looking horror games on the system, although the complicated controls let it down too. Next is Inherit the Earth, which is a translation of the German title Urban der Erde. It's a German game but has been translated to English, which is a bonus for us, as it's a really good looking point and click game. But is it as good as the likes of Monkey Island 2? Mm, no. So really, 12 discs is too much. While your pawn was still searching in the Cave of Tears, my paladin made it through the forest to home base! You were taken totally by surprise! How could I have allowed myself to be defeated by such a simple trick? You weren't defeated by a trick! You were... And now we have Rise of the Robots. This is the worst game on the list and one of the most disappointing games of all time. Visually this game sold loads of copies from the screenshots, but then it's coupled up with some of the worst fighting action gamers have ever seen. 13 discs for this crap is a disgrace. Beneath the Steel Sky is the second highest disc gobbler with a staggering 15 discs, although the next game had an ECS OCS version with 16 discs too. This was one of my favourite games back in my Amiga days, with its stunning graphics and totally immersive gameplay. And now, in first place we have Bing, Sex, Intrigue and Scalpels. This is a German game that is super erotic. While the Amiga version has never been translated to English, there's an English PC version. The gameplay takes place in a world where women have mega large breasts and aren't shy of taking off their clothes, so for that reason I've had to be really selective when getting footage. Nipples aside, this game takes up a mind-blowing 19 discs for the AGA version.
Okay, that's it for this video. I have enjoyed finding out how many discs he's had, and it also brought back some memories of being annoyed at disc changes. Please let me know in the comments below what games you had that had multiple discs. And if you haven't already, please like this video and subscribe to my channel for more great retro content. Till next time, this is OSG, signing out.